Bizarre Brain Comics. <laughs> hello, hello, hello. Gary here for Bizarre Brain Comics. <clears throat> And today, well, this is this is where we like to like to talk about comics and break down the art and stories. Talk about it as art. And so today we're going to talk about this little thing right here, the Peacemaker, issue number one. <clears throat> now, this is because we had. The recent uh, uh, movie release of the Suicide Squad, and on that Suicide Squad is a character called the Peacemaker. So that's why we're going to talk about him now. This is, um, as I said, issue number one. Now this particular issue is from 1978, but it is a reprint of the first issue from 1970, uh, correction, 1967. And this is uh, Modern Comics, which is which was uh, actually Charlton Comics. But uh, later in, in the 70s, uh, they changed their imprint to Modern Comics and, and uh, uh, all they published was, or at least primarily, at that time was uh, reprint material because they had several years of uh, reprint material available. And of course, now the Peacemaker is a character for, for DC Comics in the in the mid '80s. Um, DC bought all the all the Charlton characters, um, and like Peacemaker, the uh, Ted Cord version of Blue Beetle and Captain Atom, and a few others. Hmm. Including the question. And now these are all characters that for the past uh, 35 years or so have been rolled into the uh, main characters in the DC universe. Okay. Consult the big book of knowledge. Okay, the Peacemaker is a non-powered superhero created by Joe Gill writer and Pat Boyette, the artist, and was originally published by Charlton Comics. And as I said, he and other Charlton characters were later picked up by DC Comics in the 80s. He made his first appearance as a backup feature in The Fightin' Five, number 40, from 1966, and shortly thereafter got his own title when then The Fighting Five became a backup in his book. Uh, the Peacemaker is a U.S. diplomat by the name of uh, Christopher Smith, who is also a skilled weapons designer and skilled warrior. He, he's so desperate for peace that he is willing to fight and die for it. Okay, he had uh, there were five issues of his of his title, which is published by Charlton, and later those issues were reprinted as part of Modern Comics Im imprint of of Charlton. And that's just a, a little bit of background. Now, I talked with, about uh, the artist Pat Boyette. I gave more more detail of about him in the uh, when I did the uh, Korg seventy thousand BC episode. So you might want to take a look at that. That's about the the Neanderthal family. Okay, let's take a look at. The Peacemaker. Okay, here we have the Peacemaker number one. And this, as I said, this is a reprint, 1978 from the 1967 issue. Co uh, cover illustration by Pat Boyette. Okay, here we go, and here we go, the Peacemaker. The Killer on the Reef. And here, this is a, a splash panel. Just uh, 
giving you, giving one a uh, a sneak peek at the interior of the story. So you can see here that it's something going on underwater. This is kind of odd, long skinny panel, but it's canted so you can actually see more. This is the character, um, Christopher Smith. He's a diplomat uh, for the U.S. diplomat. And uh, this gives gives a, a little, little peek. It involves uh, conflict over fishing rights. Sounds odd. Now, I want to say here, say right now, that um, when, when I was rereading this, I noticed that this is probably some of the tightest, tightest work I've seen by artist Pat Boyette. Now, this is, this book is, has two Peacemaker stories and then the uh, Fighting Five backup story. And I suspect that these, these two, uh, stories of the feature are act were actually originally uh, intended to be future backup stories in the fighting five before that before that was canceled and these two were just uh, rolled together as uh, for the first issue um so don't even see that uh, pat boyette he is He's a skilled artist. He, he was never, never uh, a favorite of mine. I've grown to appreciate him as I got older. He has some really tight, some, uh, tight work here. And look, look how nice and lovely, beautiful job he did on that, on that uh, seagull and the ship. Everything is so tight. Lots of, lots of nice detail. And uh, he had, but his, he has a tendency to be very stiff and not very, very dynamic in his uh, in his in his drawings. Some of his later stuff uh, is a a bit looser, and and probably works a little better. Like, it, although I'm not bad mouthing Pat Boyette at all. He is a fine fine draftsman and quite capable of visual storytelling, and panel to panel storytelling. Anyway, here here we see uh, Christopher Smith coming aboard a new uh, um, this new fishing ship and uh, in his in his role as the uh, as a diplomat he's checking something out he says welcome aboard mr smith i'll have our oceanographer brief you and here he talks about uh, uh how the fishing some of the fishing grounds are are getting um overfished which is something that we've been hearing about now for for the last oh three decades <clears throat> and uh uh conflicts uh, uh springing up between um between nations because of uh, uh ships from various other nations uh, uh crowding into their their fishing areas here's another really nice really nice uh depiction of, of the ship so they're going to sea and here we see a, a diver hmm, he's amongst amongst some sharks even and he said they're they're putting out the nets, Commodore. So this guy is a, he's a sneak. And they're putting out the the nets for for the fishing, and he booby traps the net, um, puts some bunch of small explosives which destroys the net, and then he puts a puts a bomb right on the hull of the ship. But in this 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 goon here for the for the the villain of this piece, uh, the Commodore. He, but he gives gives them warnings that they have so much time to. Uh, To abandon ship or whatever because they're going to bomb the ship well of course christopher smith aka the peacemaker no one knows he's the peacemaker is right there he goes out and he dons his gear and he's and his stupid looking helmet yes he's got a stupid looking helmet he's got a little, little uh, rocket pack on his back <clears throat> and he and has some some uh, some aquatic gear and he goes in has to fend off a shark finds the uh it's nicely drawn it's very nicely drawn <clears throat> fend off a, a get the bomb off the hole there he is gets the bomb off the hole and he takes it over and he while he's being attacked by all these sharks who are being controlled by this guy boom sets off the bomb sets off and 
he's he's free. He follows the uh, that diver back to the to his point of origin, and it's a, it's a submarine, and it's hovering right over a the a sunken ship. But but the thing that gets me he says he sees a nuclear submarine. I have no way of knowing how he know how he could possibly know it's a nuclear submarine because there's no way to tell. I know I was on one. <laughs> But it's really his ocean and everything is it's very nicely drawn it's an imaginative uh interpretation of a submarine but it's it's very very nicely drawn this part just gets a little a little goofy here he follows the diver and the diver's gonna re-enter the boat and he knocks him out knocks the diver out but the, this looks like a, a door on a surface ship not on any submarine that i've ever seen anyway and uh, so he enters this the escape trunk and enters the boat and, and where they immediately capture him and this this big glued here he's the commodore he's the one behind all this said said i removed the explosive with it i destroyed some of your pet killers he said you were foolish sir had you kept it to use against me and my crew, I have more powerful ex explosives on my person, and there is no way for you to take them from me. If I am to die, you will die with me. And they, they got, of course, they got the drop on him. And there he looks a little, the Commodore looks a little flustered. <clears throat> and the, uh, the peacemaker turns and unbeknownst to them he has a little little laser device in his in his helmet and he z uh, zaps the controls and the atomic engine it'll explode no it won't it won't this is one of the parts in the story that just kind of gets me of course i understand these people are ignorant it's of this kind of stuff i know i know but it's it's a compressed story there a lot of a lot of activity going being compressed into a small space, small, uh, and, but the peacemaker gains the controls and frantically fights to surface the craft. Yes, he surfaces the boat. <laughs> Meanwhile, everyone's in panic mode because they think the, the boat's going to explode. Yeah. But, I don't, the engine, um, the nuclear power plants, uh, no, they cannot explode. Not like that. He surfaces. That's a real nice drawing there of the surface, and then the explosion here. Kabooey! It does blow up after after everyone has gotten off the ship. It's a really nice rend rendering of the explosion, the the cracked hull of the interior. It's really nice. And here they take take him into custody, and he says here, "If you hadn't interfered, I was." I was leaving the reef, heading south. Once I reached the South Pole, I would have had had partners, and we would have conquered the world. Well, the best laid plans of men and rats. And then later, he's uh, he's back in Switzerland, where where he works out of, and on the road. Again, a nice. Real nice drawing here with the, de the detail in the background. So, but as you can see, this is probably overall the most dynamic illustration in the whole story. And uh, like I said, I like his draftsmanship, his and his panel to panel storytelling is is pretty reasonable. He has good command of the human figure, um, some decent art, uh, decent inking. Uh, real nice, but it's nice and tight that's just hard to believe like i said this is some of the the, the, the tightest work i think i've seen i've seen pat boy yet i like it but it's not it doesn't flow the art doesn't flow that well i won't go into the next story that's the end of that story i'll just show a little, little bit of it here and, and that is too getting here it's not very dynamic and again a problem i said it's all compressed for a complete story and just a, what is it eight or ten pages? Probably eight pages. Here he has kind of a cool looking air, uh, airplane that he flies out. And this, I really like this panel too. Showing all these people. And that, that aircraft looks nice as well. 
blueprint of this is in Antarctica. This is, uh, I think, in reference to the the, the so-called partners that the Commodore had mentioned in the previous previous story. So a rocket being launched. Again, nice and tight. Not maybe not quite as tight as it. But here, this here, this is a nuclear power plant, and it one goes through a vent. It goes to the surface and takes it takes them down through the through the power plant. No, they don't work that way. Nuclear nuclear reactors, nuclear power plants do not work that way. And he's somehow manages to go so fast he zooms right right through the core of the power plant uh, with a cushion of air around him which protects him. No, it, uh, it doesn't work that way. And then and then that crack crashes him through here. Through through the uh, the, uh, the casing of the uh, power plant and knocks all the people out if it doesn't kill them and all that. no it that just is not a well crafted story it's just it it just doesn't work sure for kids who don't know that much about it sure it might sound exciting and thrilling and it is I, I admit it is but it the story needs needs some work. But I understand the constraints that they're uh, working under, and it's very small ep and episodic. But I don't entirely dislike it. And then that's that's about it for that. I said Pat Boyette. I saw him. He, he later has done. Uh, he's done several other things too, uh, mostly for Charlton. I've only seen him. I'm only aware of one story that I've seen him draw for Marvel Comics, and I don't think I've ever seen him doing him for uh, for DC. Um, but uh, he did uh, he did some Flash Gordon for when Charlton had that for a while, and uh, and uh, uh, he drew some issues of the Phantom for Charlton as well, and of course Korg seventy thousand uh, BC and a few other. Um, and, and a few and stories for uh, uh, mystery titles, uh, their version, uh, tame, tame down version of, of the horror magazines, horror comics. It's a decent little book. It gives you a little, little background on the character. The character's origin was depicted in one of the backup stories from the Fightin' Five. And... Well then, that's about it. I I hope you enjoy it. I get uh, so you can have a little idea of of this character of the peacemaker, in the uh, the Suicide Squad movie, being played by John Cena, and he's a he's a little bit nuttier there. Yeah, in in DC he he a little little nutty. And that's about all I've got. I I hope you enjoyed it, and 